Welcome subscribers. Hello subscribers. Welcome new subscribers. Thank you for being here today. Thank you for supporting the channel, liking and sharing our videos. We appreciate you. We love you. You can follow Chemistry on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and Patreon. My name is Revin Penelope. Today I'm here to give a book review. Badass Ancestors. I mean, I couldn't wait till this book came out because it was sitting there for maybe two or three months while she was writing it. Because I try to buy everything I can by Ancestors. This was an interesting one to me. Um, so I was really waiting for her to get done with this because I really wanted to see what she what was going to be in here. I like the title too. Uh, is it badass? You know, it's some good information in here. But most of it uh, was, was repetitive. But I like the book. I do. I, I recommend this book. I, I really do. Even though it was repetitive on the things about altars and genealogy, there were some things that she said that was a little different from some authors, some, some of the people I read that wrote books about ancestors. So her name is Patty Wingington. Wingington? Yeah, Wickington. And this is Badass Ancestors. This book is about two over 220 pages. It has 11 chapters in it. I think I got it from Amazon. Let me go over some of the chapters with you real quick. Chapter 1, Ancestor Veneration Around the World. See, I thought that was repetitive because most of them kind of talk about that, each of the books I've read. Two, Finding Your Badass Kin, Genealogy. Most of them talked about that. Four, Working With Your Badass Family. She said some things that were slightly different in, that, in Chapter 4, and I'm going to be going over Chapter 4. Five, Rituals and Meditation for Your Kin. I like that um, that chapter the best because I've already erected my altar. So she gave me ideas and framework for more rituals and meditation. You know, just developing my ancestral system. Uh, and that's what this is about, too. It's, you know, you developing your system along the way, way trusting the ancestors and reading information that resonate with you. Six. Problem ancestors. You can't choose your people. I think that's a great chapter because a lot of us, we don't got, you know, some of all our ancestors went good. So I thought that was a good, good uh, chapter. A connecting with arch -tipple, uh, tipple badasses. That was good because I do a lot of ancestral readings and I work with a lot of arch types. So I like what she had to say about that subject. Nine, divination with your badass kin. Ten, eating with your ancestors. Eleven, badass legacy. So let me go into the introduction. The introduction, I, I thought, ugh, that it was powerful because she comes out, she comes out telling you what ancestral work is all about. And let me just read it. And I've often said that, so it was nice to see someone else. Uh, have that pers perspective or that awareness as well. You can't choose your family. How often have you heard the old chestnut? It's true, though while you get to pick your friend circle, your romantic partners, your co-workers to some degree, you've got no choice when it comes to your kinfolk. When it comes to relatives, you're stuck with the luck of a random draw. Most of the people whose DNA runs through you have been dead for generations, and all of them both the living and those who have crossed over the veil have their own unique quirks, flaws, and personality traits. By learning to work with your ancestral guides, you can build up your own sense of personal empowerment. Empowerment is a big word with a lot of different meanings, and it's one that more it's one that more and more people are embracing. But what exactly does empowerment mean to you personally? Maybe it's a chance to feel like you're in charge of your life and the things that happen to you. Perhaps you want to feel more involved in how you respond, how you respond and react 
to the people and events in the world around you. Or just possibly you want to feel like you can handle any curveball throws at you. Any, I'm sorry, <clears throat> any curveball life throws at you. And be stronger emotionally, physically, and spiritually. For some people, working with ancestral guides is a way to heal from trauma. They say that trauma can be passed through generations. If that's the case, then certainly healing can be as well. Why not call upon your ancestors to help you navigate the murky waters of recovery, self-guidance, and wellness? If your ancestors themselves were the cause of trauma, you can break the cycle of suffering by interacting with them. After all, if unpleasantness runs in your family, isn't it about time for it to run out? We can't change the past, but we can face it head on and refuse to let it define us. Okay, I thought that was uh, that was uh, something interesting. Interesting. Uh, that that awareness, she realized that. Okay, so I'm going on ancestor veneration around the world. So we already know about that. Not going to go into that chapter at all. I think it's a little section in genealogy I have marked. Let me see. I do. Uh, this is the build a story for your badass kin. Uh, you, we need to know, you know. You can easily say that your ancestors, when you look into your, your genealogy, it's easy just to, you know, uh, say that your ancestor left one country and went to another and then just be done with it and move on. But the next, then move on to the next name to the list. Or you can learn about the culture and society of their times and you can feel what it must have been like to live in those times. You know, it's very important that you tell their stories, whether they are unpleasant, because you're learning, you're learning ancestral knowledge too. You're learning through their experience, through their wisdom. There's wisdom behind each story, whether it's unpleasant or pleasant. There's wisdom behind it, knowing their stories. Okay, so I thought that was interesting. Uh... Should go on the ancestors altar. I am not going into that because there's basic knowledge out there about that. So you guys should already know about a little bit about ancestor altar. Like I said, a lot of the you know this book, he repeated a lot of things because I, but you know the title I thought I was going to learn. You know I don't know. I was just expecting to learn. I don't know so much more. I guess in-depth uh, in depth contact, I guess. I don't know, but it's still some good information in here. Uh, this was my favorite, uh, one of my favorite chapters. Chapter four, working with badass family, living authentically with purpose. For starters, do your best to live as an ethical and loving person. This means quite simply make an effort to fulfill your highest potential and find your purpose, whatever it may be, while you're here on earth. Many cultures believe we have karmic destiny to fulfill and that we're all just one more link in a cosmic chain. If that is indeed the case, then we honor all of the other links when we make it priority to do what we need to need in order to do what we need in order to live the most authentic life we can. Your ancestors are your allies. Remember their power and live life to the fullest in their honor. In contrast, when we lose touch with the ancestral power, we can ask our ancestors to help bring about the big change we need to live our life with purpose. What do we mean when we talk about authentic living? Well, it sounds like totally catchy new age buzzword. There's actually a sociological concept behind it. Living authentically is a pretty simple idea, and it's focused around the idea that it's perfectly acceptable and probably far healthier to live in a way that allows our actions and words to be consistent with our beliefs and values. Keep in mind that the living, living authentically is a pretty subjective value statement. 
you're the only one who can decide what's real and authentic for you. But consider this, authentic living is liberating because once we shed the artifice of worrying about trying to pretend to be something we're not, all that's left is genuine, is the gen genuine article. There is a linear progression in finding true self. Once the true self, once you've reached that, that point or peak or plateau, depending on your perspective, you got nothing but authentic living on the uh, on the road ahead. How do we find, how do we get to that state of finding our true selves? We spent much of our lives trying to please other people, make everyone happy, fit in, blend, and be part of society that emphasizes conformity and leaves very little room for individuality. The first step on our journey to authenticity is self-awareness. Define your values. Figure out what matters most to you. What are your goals? What things are important? both in your interpersonal relationships and your material life. Train yourself to be watchful for times when you're not being authentic. Did you do or say something that conflicts with your core values? Are you holding others to standards that don't meet your, you don't meet yourself? Pay attention to the moments of your insincerity. Try to evaluate what fears might be at, at their root. Are you worried that someone might dislike you or reject you if you see if they see you for your true self, to develop a mindset of living as your true self, you have to change your way of thinking, not only about yourself, but about the way you interact with others. Let go of patterns, bad habits, toxic relationships that no longer serve you. <laughs> if something doesn't make your heart sing, it's time to evaluate if it's, it's, worth, if it's worth keeping. Open your heart and your mind to the idea that you are, are deserving of loving and happiness, love and happiness. You're entitled to receive it and you're entitled to give it to those who are worthy of you. Allow your spirit to be free. Do all the things that make you happy, whether it's singing, dancing, jumping around, or drifting around in your living room. So, uh, you know, again, I think this was a, a is there something else I have marked in here? Let me check and see if there's anything else I have marked in here, you guys. I have some rituals. And, you know, I think our, a ritual for ancestor money uh, is really good in here. It's a little different than I've seen from other people. So uh, I wanted to do that money, uh, that money ancestor offering. She has some really good prayers in here that I really resonate with. Prayers and rituals. Okay, I think, I think, and she tells you how to uh, make different crafts and stuff for your ancestors. I'm trying to see if there's anything else that I have marked here. Oh, I do have something marked. I know there's something else. I like that this. I resonated with this. Some people find ancestral guides using meditation. While there are a number of guided meditations you can do to meet your guides available commercially, you can also meet with them by meditating on your own. As you begin to clear your mind of anything that's not related to meeting your guide, you may want to light some incense or play some soft, non-intrusive music in the background. For many people, this meditation takes the form of a long, solitary journey. Visualize you uh, yourself walking in a remote place far beyond the crowds and technology and your job and your cell phone. Maybe you're on a path winding through a forest or a trail traverse, tras, traversing a craggy mountainside 
or surrounded by tall grassy grasses out in the steppes of eastern Russia. As you wander along the trail along, allow yourself to look around and you'll often meet someone along the way. And this person could be your ancestor guide. Often guides appear as representative archetypes. That means they can be be someone who symbolizes other things. If your guide looks like Eleanor Roosevelt, that doesn't necessarily mean Eleanor herself is your ancestral guide, but she may represent a person who wants to share certain things with you, honesty with you, honesty, leadership, and discipline, and so on. Much like, uh, and then she's going to lucid dreaming, but I thought that meditation thing was uh, worth mentioning. Okay. So those are all the things that jumped out at me in this book. I do, uh, you know, if you're a beginner, you're a beginner, I do recommend this book. If you've been in it for a while and you're just trying to collect some more rituals or find some more rituals to do with your ancestors, you're just researching, uh, I recommend the book for that, you know, but this book is really written for a, a beginner. You know, she's reading it for a beginner, but there are some awesome, cool rituals, meditations, and thing, and prayers in this book. So, yeah, I do recommend the book. I also wanted to mention also, after doing all the research and working with my ancestors and developing my relationship with my ancestors, I decided to share my journey and work, what worked for me on, uh, in a little ebook. So, I'm giving away freebies today. Uh, and I'll leave a link here to my website where you can download all of our free ebooks that we have available. But the ebook talks about my healing journey, what has really helped me. I, sh uh, I have some meditations that you can make yourself in the book. Uh, what else do I have in there? I talk a, a little bit about uh, having uh, having. What am I trying to look uh, find a word for? I talk a little bit about having to really work with your consciousness on connecting with your ancestors and meditation. So I really focus that, uh, and it, it is a, a shamanic type of uh, what a concept that I use when I do my uh, meditation contact and meditation with my ancestors and it has yielded me some great results so maybe it'll help you uh, there's some meditations also on our youtube channels if you're interested in ancestral meditation but i can't emphasize doing the ancestral work going beyond just putting offerings uh, on your altar and water it's more work to be done so if you're interested in doing some ancestral work i'm going to leave a link here where you can go get the ancestral guide, where you can start uh, some other ebooks that can help you start, get you started on your journey, you know, doing your ancestral work. If you find that you're having problems with meditation, uh, you're not really able to connect with your ancestors, because I my most of my meditations are from an indigenous point, shamanic point, or they have like that shamanic feel to it or indigenous feel to it. So if you're interested in meditations uh, or just sharing what's going on with you in meditation, because I, I, that's a platform where I share what's going on with me, what I learned, uh, my ancestors teach me, new rituals and stuff like that that I learned, join me on Patreon because I share a lot of information there. Uh, I'm really sensitive about the work I do with the ancestors. It's like an art. So that's just a sacred uh a place or a hold a, a space for myself where I can share those experiences at and some of the things that I do learn with other people. And other people, you know, if you're learning and you want to uh, get in here together and and see what we come up with, come join us on Patreon, you know, uh, let us know what's going on. And uh, I don't mind sharing my knowledge with others. Okay, I hope this... Uh, you know, you know, you like the book, uh, and you like the book review. Thanks for being here with me today, loved ones. Love, light, ashe, namaste, loved ones.